Quick shots. Welcome to Quick Shots with your favourite cousins. We answer your questions. I'm going to hit you with this one first up. Alex Rahul, Ooh. I'd like to know, uh, you guys talk a lot about building brand new properties. That seems risky to me because it means buying off the plan, which means sunset clause, which is risky. So it's, <laughs> it's a question as a statement. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, it is, it is, it is. That's right. Um, okay, so buying brand new properties is risky because of the sunset clause. So for those of you who don't, that's that's what Rahul said, that's not my answer. For those of you who don't know, a sunset clause is basically, um, it's in anything that's off the plan or like not created yet as yeah. if to sort of protect both buyer and seller so that if it is not delivered within that time frame, sunset clause could be 12 months, 24 months, could be 36 months, then either or both can walk away from the contract. So, yes, there is definitely an element of risk when entering uh, any contract with a sunset clause when you're talking off the plan. Um, that often happens really when we're talking about apartments. They have to sort of sell more, uh, sell a certain amount of apartments before they can start building. So to cover the developer's debt. Um, so that's a longer term. And yeah, there is, there is absolutely an element of risk. I personally would not be buying something 12 uh, plus months out from when I thought that it was going to be delivered because so much can change. And if yeah. you've paid a deposit and it's unrefundable, so much can change in that time, uh, notably regard with regard to your finance. How do you know what you can borrow today is what you can borrow in 12 to 24 months? So Rahul, yes, I think there is absolutely an element of risk there. Um, however, working back into our world and we talk about buying new and, and building new, um, we're typically dealing in, in land that sometimes is not registered yet, so it's not ready to be settled on. Um, but we will always talk about buying it within uh, that's titled so it's registered or it's in three to six months. So you've got a really good idea of when you're actually going to be able to settle that and start building your house so that you can minimise your risk. I think you're on the right track there with your questions. Uh, this one's for you, cuz. Mamuji, I love that name. Are we at the bottom of the Sydney house market? Uh, well, yeah, traditionally speaking, we are <laughs> because we've seen um, three or four years of really solid growth in the Sydney market, more than 50% growth. It's come back 6 or 7%, so I feel like mm. it, it probably has bottomed out. Um, Sydney, very safe place to invest though. Um, so I would say certainly if you've got property in Sydney, don't sell today because we're going to see an explosion of overseas migration, which we're, we're sort of st starting to see. So I think there's going to be another run in the Sydney market at some point. Um, it is Australia's biggest city, biggest employer. Uh, would would there be slightly better opportunities elsewhere in in the short to medium term? Probably. Um, mm. The the downside to Sydney is that they have had a lot of growth in the past two three years, and the rental returns are lowest in the country a, as a result because rents haven't haven't kept up. Um, but certainly, I wouldn't be selling if I had stuff in Sydney today. Um, I might throw to you for this one, and I feel like you're very qualified to talk about this. Boo. Martina would like to know, with the submarine announcement, the A, UK, US, I think they're calling it, uh, announcement uh, where we're building all these submarines, is this going to create some good investment opportunities? Martina, you've come to the right place. We've been talking about this all week, and my answer to that is absolutely yes. Why? Uh, well, it's a huge investment into South Australia, um, for, for one, which I've been doing a lot of business in for the last six years. So become very familiar with that market. Um, but what that will do and how, what it has done for the past few years is started to slowly create a lot of jobs. And I think the, the figure is that they're going to invest some $360 billion into this because it's part of our defence strategy as Australians, which defence is I guess very important, um, looking at the sort of uh, future of our economy. But um, that massive investment is going to be over about 30, 32 years. It's a very long time. Long time. Now, I, I will say that it's older than we you. don't. Yeah, it, it is older than me. It is older than me. Yes, something that's finally older than me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting old. Um, but look, I wouldn't solely base all of my investment decisions off one big project like this because, you know, for all we know, it, it could disappear um, overnight. That's a bit of a dramatic answer. But 
But my point is it will absolutely create many opportunities uh, to bring a lot of people into the state of South Australia uh, for jobs um, and a lot of cash will be injected in that. And they've actually got to upgrade their whole entire shipyard and facility before they can start to build the submarines. Um, so we're going to see employment um, in sort of phase A, if you like, and then uh, a lot through phase B. The last number they quoted, I think, over the 32 years was some 25,000 jobs and then new jobs. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of other stuff going on in Adelaide. So um, this is just a perfect perfect compliment to all of that. So thank you, Martina, for asking me that question. Come to the rap, Les. <laughs> uh, that pretty much wraps us up for this week because uh, it's been great just having you here because I might not see you for a few weeks. Ah, oh, fingers crossed. <laughs> Thanks for listening to another episode of The Double Shot with your favourite cousins, Alex and James Fitzgerald. If you've got a burning question or something we absolutely need to talk about on the pod, please write to us. Both of our emails are in the show notes. For little real estate tidbits and a little bit of banter, okay, a lot of banter, you can follow us on the gram. Our handle is the double shot dot podcast. That, my friends, is the double shot dot podcast. Until next time, think of us when you sit back and sip your next double shot.